Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video this week. And this week, I'm going to try to do something different that I haven't done in this channel before. I want to do a, a review on a product that I've been using for quite some time. I did a free trial for a little bit, and then I decided to actually purchase the product. And having done some work and having used a lot of AI products, I began to appreciate a lot of these tools and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a review on Odin AI, which is a platform for being able to create your own agents and chatbots. And there's a lot of things that it can do. It's essentially a platform for a bunch of things, one of which is doing some automation. A lot of you guys are doing automations and working a lot with AI tools and such. So this provides a lot of tools as being able to create your own chatbots, being able to create information and feed it into the AI is part of the system. So I'm just going to go and walk you through the process of, of how the tool works. If it's something that interests you or something that you already are using on a daily basis, you might have heard about this tool. I haven't really seen a lot of reviews for this tool in the community in YouTube. So I want to do a video that goes through what this tool provides and what the benefit of using this tool. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you look at the, uh, the Odin website, you can scroll down here. You can see that they proclaim themselves as the one AI platform for everything, which they, they do. They, they do seem to be a matured product compared to what's a lot of the SaaS product that's been out there in terms of using generative. So we're going to be taking a look at a little bit how it works and the different things that it does. If you're working with ChatGP, it has the conversational assistant as well. There's the feature of note taker where you can have it sync up to your calendar and Odin AI and can listen to the meetings that you have. It can summarize the meetings and it can provide a summary of the action items that have transpired throughout the meetings. So you can talk about what happened in the meeting and the outcome that came about from the meeting. So. Those are the things that you can do as part of the meetings. You can do some automated transcription. But there's also a powered search you can go through and quickly just grab the information that you need from the meetings that you just had, including the action items, that, which I previously mentioned. It seems like it's a pretty cool concept. It allows you to sync with tools such as Zoom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams. So you can sync with your calendar. And when the time comes, you'll be basically just go to your meeting and it will just listen in and be there in the background. So I think that's pretty cool. I think that one of the biggest selling point of this application is the chatbot feature, which allows you to embed the chatbot as part of your website. You can customize it. You can tailor it according to the knowledge base that you have for your product or for your company. It's like having a 24 seven AI employee that's there and have all the information that generally would only be available for a customer support or whatever. So it's pretty cool that you have this capability right here. You can train it however you want. You can train it based on the domain specific knowledge on your system. It has multilingual support. So if you're supporting not just English, but other languages as well, such as Spanish, French, and so on and so forth, you can target those audience as well and without issues. It also includes the no-code integration platform, which allows you to integrate with Odin through their API. So that's one of the features that they mentioned here. And they do have some automation feature as well. So I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit in this video. You can see here the Odin Task Automator. They are using Active Pieces. They're embedding it as part of the platform. But if you're using Active Pieces, you're pretty much at home here with how their automation flow, essentially tying up their Odin system into active pieces and use that as a trigger or as a part of the flow when you're doing automation and i believe you do have i don't think there's a limit as far as how many automation you can do but i could be wrong on that front so and see here the features the ai note taker the automator the chat support the knowledge base the chatbot builder and conversational AI. So all these different things that you need, you do have resources such as the API. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pricing real quick. So they give you 100 credits to start with if you are in a free tier. So you can get the automator out of the box, the cost of agents. You do have a limit as far as the AI model that you can use. In this case, you do only have access to 3.5. 
But if you want to upgrade and you want to be able to get GPT-4 Turbo and Cloud 2, including Cloud 3, which they do support, including the Gemini, which I'm going to be discussing in a little bit, you do need to upgrade to the paid version of it, which is the Enterprise. And you'll have access to the various assistants that they have. You can bring your own key which allows you to be able to include your own API key from OpenRouter or from OpenAI and use that in addition to the credit system that they offer. It allows you to chat with the PDF, which I think is the biggest feature that they have. Imagine having to interface with a PDF with, let's say, a thousand pages and you're doing some research work and you just want to be able to grab uh, specific information about that PDF. And the web caller is, is something that... I'm enjoying because if you want to train your chatbot to have a specific knowledge and it's only available on your website, you are able to do a web call in here and specify a domain, which I'm going to be demonstrating a little bit how to do. It's quite simple and it's quite powerful that I really love this feature, note taking, customer support. And so let's go ahead and take a look at logging into the, the platform of Odin. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Odin and just go around and just take a look at what the platform provides. So by default, when you log into Odin for the first time, you're going to be presented with a screen that allows you to see the different projects that you can create new projects. But they also give you the Odin on project, which already has the, the Odin KB knowledge base agent already set up for you so let's go ahead and take a look at that as i did add a few things here that would expedite this demo so as you can see here on the top when you go to the onboarding process here and you see here the learning hub where you can learn more and have additional information and guide as how to use the Odin platform you can also connect your google calendar from here you can either connect your outlook calendar or your google calendar from here this can communicate with Odin and can uh, listen for events where you, if you do have some meetings you can join and participate in those meetings and it will essentially just connect to it and this will allow odin to connect to that meeting and listen in and do note taking if that's what you want okay but from here you can see amount of credits that is going through this onboarding process to get started you can see the, the amount of credits start chat add to knowledge base creating agents i'm going to go through the list here on the the left hand side actually let's go through the account real quick if you click on the name on the top you can see that there's account profile information let's go ahead and take a look you can see the, the name personal information dashboard how many users projects use it user and some billing information some api key and if you do decide to add your a key if you want to integrate it for on any different platform this will allow you to generate a, a new api key so that you can communicate to the Odin AI platform that they do have an API access. So they do have team settings here. If you go to team settings, you can see here that you can create a name for your team. You can also bring your own key, which is nice. If you want to extend the credit system and want to be able to use your own key in addition to the credit that they already provide in the system. So they do allows you to enter in your own OpenAI, which is for GPT models. You can also include the Cloud AI, which is by Anthropic. You can enter that key and you can add it here. So that's going to be for the, the account information. If you, so you want to go back to the main interface, you're going to go ahead and click on that arrow. Let's go ahead and explore the settings here real quick. So on the settings, you can see here the, the name of the project because we are specifically in this project, see the project ID, and then you can name the project. So if you have multiple projects that you're working against with, this is how you set those options and configure it. You can have different members. You can also the different actions that you took in this project, the silent guide, being able to fine tune. So the, the API key is accessible through the account information or to the settings. So you want to be able to switch to a different project you can see here on the left hand side on the top you can see here you can favorite a project here you can also go back and view all the projects and you can also create a new project from here so, so that's a handy a feature to have as far as having to move and jump from different project to the next and you can do that from there as far as the left hand side let's go ahead and go to the chat here so you can see here i did for them this demonstration purpose i added a couple of chats here so initially when i first added this chat i was able to do a, a just a quick query on on what 
is active pieces just to test his knowledge and see how updated the knowledge base is as far as the trained model that they have for this large language model. So it did provide this answer where it says right here, Activisys is a software tool used for project management that helps teams collaborate and stay organized. It includes features that you can tell right away that it's incorrect information. It's just coming up with some random response here. Keep in mind here that it's using GPT 3.5. You can see here at the bottom, every time you create a new chat is you're basically creating a context per conversation. So everything that is within the chat window allows you to have a specific context and so you can stay relevant as to, as to what the conversation is about. You can see here that it's set up to use the Odin KB agent. You can go ahead and click on that one and it will bring up the uh, Odin agents interface here, our, our modal here, which allows you to be able to choose what type of agent is available that you can use. By default, they give you six different agents here that you can use. Each of these agents have different special specific knowledge and trained data as far as what it can do. The KB agent and KB V2 agent have different levels of knowledge as far as like what type of data they're trained with. So you can go ahead and change that here. Google search agent here is very obvious that it's based on the Google search type of trained agent. And also you do have image generate agent here as well. And I did added my own agent here and let's go ahead and explore it. By default, you, you won't be able to modify the agents that they created for you, but they are allowing you to create custom agents based on your predefined set of rules and criteria. So let's go ahead and do an edit here and go ahead and click on that. That you can see here that I named the agent Dennis agent. I can go ahead and include additional things that I can do, such as the DALI image generation. I can embed a Shopify and add some rules here. If I want to, there's some actions as well. So you can define some personality here. This is similar to when you're using conversational AI where you, it allows you to enter in and pass in the system messages. So from here, you can add a personality to your agent here and you can specify what type of agent you want this to be. If you want an agent that generates content, you can define it as an SEO assistant. If you want something that is designed for writing code, you can specify that you are a coding assistant. So you can define your assistant however you want. And from here, you can also set the default personality and also set the creativity. Obviously, the more creative you want, it will become creative as far as what M service it will provide to you. So you just want it straight to the point. You're just not veering away from the factual information. Then you want the creativity to be towards the zero, right? and 0.5 would be the middle of the road. <clears throat> so from here, you can also go and change the AI model. I chose the Claude 3 Haiku, but when you do go switch to a paid account, you do have access to Claude 3 and GPT-4. If you are on a free tier, you only have access to GPT-3.5, which is pretty much free. And I think, I believe you do have access to Gemini Pro, Pro as well on a free tier, as well as the open source large language model here. But if you do want access to the Cloud3 and upwards, all these the new ones, you can see here that this is the, the amount of credits that you need to be able to use this model. So depending on what type of plans do you have, you usually have a, a set amount of credits. So this is per every time you make a query, to that model, they'll, they'll deduct 10 credits or 15 credits, depending on what model are you using. But you can also include your additional custom model as well. So if there's any model that is not on that list, you can go and use that. And you can use OpenAI or Open Router right now, as they only have access to those two providers right now, and you can add your own API key. You can also include your uh, max input tokens and max response tokens. So if you want to be specific as far as your budget and just want to set to those parameters up front, you can do that so you don't go over budget and go above what you've set up for the month or whatever your budget is. So yeah, you have the option of adding your own connection if you want. Additional option here, you can set your knowledge base. It, the knowledge base can come from different places as I'll show you guys in a little bit. But the knowledge base, you can tweak it to however you want. You can set the knowledge base to include what type of documents you want the agent to come up with as far as the responses is concerned. So, and you can go ahead and save it. So that will save that agent. So let's go ahead and take a look at the knowledge base. As you can see here, 
I, I am crawling the, the activepieces.com website. I only had to, to specify the base domain. I didn't have to specify the different pages that was associated with that domain. And I was able to figure out and find the different pages that it needs to crawl. I don't have to specify a sitemap or I don't have to specify all these different pages and it was able to figure it out. So if you want to include a specific domain or website as part of your knowledge base, to be able to extract information from that, you can just go and click on crawl website and it'll, this will create a, a crawler for you. So let's say I want to add, you can specify whatever website you want to be included. So let's say I want to do I want to train and add the activepieces.com website as part of this knowledge base. All I have to do is just specify the seed URL and it will do everything to be able to sync and crawl that data. You can also include some crawling patterns as well. If you want to exclude certain pa patterns, you want to only want to include certain pages, you can do that and, and it will only crawl certain information. You can also do a scheduling here. So let's say you have a website that's frequently changing and you want to be able to train the chatbot to have a more up-to-date information as far as what's in the knowledge base, you can have it set to do a recall every specific amount of days. So for instance, if I want to have it crawl every day, I can go specify that every two days, three days, and so on and so forth. So I have it the crawling enable here. If I do want to refetch information every few days or so, depending on how much your website is changing day by day, you might want to go by depending on your use case. So let's go ahead and get out of that. So you can see here all the different schedules that you have that's specific to this. And you can also connect it to your Google Drive account. So you have some documents or some PDF that you want to have available in your knowledge page. You can go ahead and connect that as well. So you can connect that as well. So you can have all these different sources of information available it could be anywhere from your website or it could be from your Google Drive. So when I added my active pieces here, you can see here that every time it, it crawled to the different pages, let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. So for instance, the pieces store, you can go and inspect it. You can see here the content in the view. So this is the actual uh, web page here and this is the extracted content. So from this view, it was able to only extract the most important information, which is the, the top right here. At Activities let you connect storage and it didn't really waste valuable resources as far as crawling other texts, even though it had other texts. You can see here the size of the information that was gathered on this page. And you can see here the total of this knowledge base contains 31,224 words in this file size. And in addition to being able to crawl a website, you can also include a file, let's say if you want to embed a PDF or a document as part of this knowledge base, you can also do that. So you can see here at the bottom, you can embed PDF, MP4, Word documents, HTML, JSON, XML, text, and then CSV. The videos cost one credit per minute of transaction. So according to this little bits of information here in the bottom, but if you want a bit more information, if you want to train your bot to have additional information, not just the website and being able to call it, you can also include your PDF document or some document that you have. And one thing that you can also do is to create a document. If you just want to just type it in, let's say you just want to just copy and paste a specific document or just type your own document, you can also do that here. It's essentially... It's like working with a Word document. You can just type in whatever you want. So Active Pieces, Pieces is a automation platform. You can do some filtering here as what type of resources. If you want to just want to see specific ones in this list, you can do that. So this is going to be a knowledge base that's going to be specific to this project that you're using. So all of the documents that you upload is going to be added to this document section. One thing I want to take a look at also is the automator. So they do have the embedded active pieces as part of their platform. So if you work with active pieces, which majority of people that are watching this YouTube channel is using, you should be familiar with active pieces. So you pretty much have the same type of automation that you, that you are familiar with already. But in addition to what you're already accustomed to, they do have some Odin action here that you can use. So they have this Odin platform embedded within active pieces so it allows you to tie in and do some extra automation based on the chatbot or the ai that you're training on this platform so which is neat 
One thing that I haven't figured out yet is how many automation you can do or if, whether it's limited or not, as I can't really find that information here, but I'm assuming you can do some limited automation, but I could be wrong here. So leave, uh, please go ahead and leave in a comment. But yeah, but you do have the similar things that you can do with active pieces. You can do automation. You can look at your runs. But yeah, that's the automator, which includes Odin AI as part of the automation flow. You can use it and do an automation based on the AI knowledge base that you have in the agents. So let's go ahead and look at the public chatbot. So once you've created your knowledge base and your agents, you're able to create a chatbot here. So the chatbot is essentially a way of you to be able to, to integrate the agent in your website by, so if you go switch to the integration, you can just copy the script, the JavaScript code here. You can do a Windows script style or do a widget script style here, way of declaration. So you can do that if you just want to embed this to your website. Obviously, you can change the chatbot name by just modifying it. For instance, I want to change this to be called a Dennis Agent. I can change the name of the agent. I can also change the welcome message if I want to have a specific one specific to my product. Let's say I want, hi, my name is this. And how can this bot help you with your search of product today or something like that, right? Yeah, from here, you can change it to whatever the project type that you want. We can do a generic type of project or you can do a support type project. You can also have a, a project description if this project is particular to what type of agent is you're providing or chatbot what you're providing for your website for this project. So when you go here to the, the chatbot, you can modify the message, the welcome message. You can modify the input text. You can see here at the bottom, ask Odin anything. You can put whatever you want there as well. And then you can do a suggestion of what type of questions can they ask in this chat within this chatbot. So you can also change the default agent if you want. You can also set enable multiple chats. You can also customize the appearance if you want to make a different color for the font size, for the bubble color. You can do that as well. So if you go here to the integration, one thing I, I forgot to mention is you can also integrate it to your Slack. So if you want to add the bot to your Slack messaging channels, you can do that as well, as well as to add to Google Chat. So those are the things that you can do with Odin AI. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for this video. If there's anything that you'd like me to do a video on in the future, whether it's automation or anything else, just leave it down in the comments. Let me know if you like this style of video. I've been trying to change up the style of my video and see which one will work best. And yeah, please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.